Welcome back. Um, it's time for us to get Stockfish for Crazy House and other variants built. Um, now that Stockfish 12 has released on its semi-annual, annual, whatever its periodic schedule is that they typically release as they demonstrate a large ELO increase, um, the official Stockfish team has released a version, uh, well, rather, they've released Stockfish 12, which has neural network support, uh, which is really cool. And this means a huge headache for me because I have to test with and without the neural network um, that things are working. So, um, yeah, let's defer that question until later. So I created this issue in, uh, or rather Fabian created this issue in uh, GitHub to track our usage of variantfishtest.net. Um, where I suggested, and he agrees, that we're going to need to use GCC 7 or newer in order to support the C++ 17 standard that uh, Stockfish is now compiled with. So the official Stockfish team is putting quite a bit of work to support a wide variety of platforms and cross-compile builds. Um, so they've done fantastic work there. However, they've... <laughs> put down their foot and said that now our standard that they're coding with uh, is 17 rather than 11. So they are no longer formally offering support for the C++11 standard. So you're going to need a new compiler. If you don't already have, if you have not already downloaded one in the last few years or so, that's no big deal. Um, what is kind of a larger deal is I had a a side discussion uh, with Fabian talking about we don't really know everything that's in this neural network code so I'm introducing a new uh, compile flag in the make file that by default is enabled however can be disabled should I need to troubleshoot and build things on this variant fish test site without the neural networking code in place so I introduced this flag, and this is causing all manner of headaches, and I am struggling to debug it, and Fabian is being very helpful and supportive. Um, so, uh, yeah, one thing I had not really accounted for, or I thought I had accounted for, I'm not entirely sure that I have, but it hasn't seemed to affect my testing either way, is that there is this NNUE embedding off uh, flag which is in code that I've essentially commented out when I'm compiling without neural network support. So, yeah, this this will be an adventure. Um, yeah, and I just put this comic here, credit to Randall Monroe of XKCD, that, yeah, Official Stockfish has put in a lot of changes. They, that team has made some fantastic progress over the last six months, if not longer. Um, with their research in embedding a neural network based architecture for evaluation and search and such within um, Stockfish. So uh, yeah, kudos to them. Really my complaints are pretty minor in the broader context of the great progress that their team has made. So I put this comic here um, uh, thanks to Monroe Basically saying, you guys broke my stuff, I have to go fix my stuff. And, like, okay, fine. I can complain about it, but we gotta get it done. So, on that note, are you ever gonna do the dishes? Or will you just change your major to biology? Shots fired. Alright, so, get status. Locally, I... Okay, first let me show you my build script. So, this might look like a mess. It's not. I've seen worse. Um, so the gist of this is like you can automatically check out a, ver a branch and we could do a clean, you could do a build step, rename the binary from a clean, do another checkout, compile with some other flags, um, including this disable neural network embedding into the binary. Uh, I hadn't thought about this till now, but so far I've just been using Clang for compilation. Uh, could be interesting to try GCC. 
doesn't seem to matter whether I enable optimization or not. Uh, the neural network is, I'm compiling without neural network support, so this flag here, NNUE equals no, is my new introduction. And how does that new introduction work? Um, boy, that'd be nice if I could tell you. No, just kidding. Um, so I introduced, I looked at the existing make file and got some idea of how this syntax works. So here I'm saying if not equal NNUE no, then we're going to compile uh, with the use NNUE flag, which is going to uncomment pieces of code that are between an if def and an end if. So any block of code that's conditionally compiled based on the presence of this flag can be compiled if I've passed in any NUE parameter as part of my make target. Um, unless that I've passed in a parameter value of no. Also omitting the parameter results in the default behavior of want, uh, compiling with the neural network enabled. So let's start there. Let's go back to our build script. Uh, normally you don't switch off optimization. Let's say, let's compile with a neural network using Clang, using a pretty modern architecture. Um, Oh, wait, have I done something stupid here already? Maybe valgrind doesn't work in combination with the debug flag. I forget how that's generally supposed to work. Uh, so if I'm going to do a regression test, let me do a build here, check out not what's on master, but the previous commit from master. Um, yeah, so here do a build, uh, what parameters do I want to use for this build, the BMI2 architecture, uh, Clang is the compiler, let's say no, we're going to do a release build, NNUE equals yes, uh, actually this parameter doesn't matter one way or the other because my latest commit introduced the NNUE parameter. Um, so we perform the build, Otherwise, yeah, all our architecture flags, etc., are the same. And this renames the binary to Stockfish Master. And then we recompile, check out the current master head. Um, and let's see. Download the neural network with makeNet. Um, setting this CXX flag. I wonder if that's my problem. Um, well, there's one way to find out. How about instead of compiling with that flag, let's just perform make here. There we go. So if we have BMI2 and Clang and we're doing a release build, um, then Valgrind, the memory leak checker, should not find a memory leak. Maybe it only found a memory leak earlier because I was doing a debug build. We'll find out. Um, all right, have I changed anything in my fi make file? Uh, yes, so let's restore my make file, re-enabling all the variants. Uh, one dot two, 1.txt and 2.txt are sample output. Uh, I've already downloaded the neural network nn this number dot nnue. I've already got table bases and various other things installed locally, not that we're using those. And deploy.sh is for me deploying my working binary uh, to my cloud instance so it can just continuously play against people on LeechS. Um, so let's do a make clean. We can take another look at here's my build script. And yeah, I think uh, git log master tilde one. Right, that includes uh, merge from this morning of the MADV random uh, needed for haiku based comp compilation. Like I said, they've been doing a lot of support for various architectures, so I don't happen to have a haiku instance ready 
nor do I think that um, uh, Travis or GitHub or anywhere else has a CI pipeline that has just a haiku image available. Uh, it could be the case. Maybe, um, maybe if you go to Docker Hub or somewhere, they'll have one. Uh, which reminds me, Docker Hub is doing something super annoying. Um, but I guess I don't need to dwell on that. Um, yeah, I'm just a bit miffed that like they have all this storage. And now they're saying, well, it's going to be a pro feature if you want your images that are not regularly used to stay on Docker. So it's just going to be a hassle for everyone just so they can save some megabytes of disk storage. Um, which probably matters in terms of their costs, but it's just going to annoy everyone using that ecosystem. Um, I forget. Did Microsoft buy Docker? Or am I just making that up? I'm probably just making it up, right? Yeah, who owns Docker? Let's see, Docker Inc. are the developers. Um, hmm. Okay. 2019 Marantis. Okay. So, yeah, it's not owned by Microsoft. Microsoft owns quite a few things, but they don't own Docker yet. And perhaps that's for the best. It just blows my mind that you would have a centralized repository that's not federated in any way. This isn't like a peer-to-peer -peer way of downloading libraries. This is the central repo saying that they're not going to keep your images anymore unless you are actively using them. There is some logic to that. It makes it easier to search for maintained images, things that if there are security holes or other thing reasons for change, those images may need to be updated. Um, but, okay, so this is interesting. No leaks found yet, so possibly the fact that I was doing a debug build is what triggered um, oh, the errors I was having locally. Uh, whereas here, oh, hang on. This is also doing a debug build. So we've always done that. And a debug build until now has never caused um, a memory leak. But now there's like a conditional jump based on an uninitialized value. But if we're not doing a debug build, this is okay, I guess. How does this work in the official Stockfish repo? Um, official Stockfish. Stockfish. So they have a Travis repo, or a Travis pipeline. Um, this Travis pipeline, I suppose, could have been easier for me to just look at the dot Travis dot YML file, but I'm wanting to find val grind. So debug equals, and then this is occluded by the 265. Thank you for nothing. Could we hide this or otherwise give me visibility to what's behind the 269? Do I have to like put this into notepad to be able to see it? Uh, debug equals yes. Okay. So we are comparing apples to apples here. They do perform debug equals yes veil grind tests, and somehow only my version of this code base 
uh, encounters this error. Um, I do have a thought as to what could be causing this. And it probably is self-inflicted, so... Alright, so yeah, instrumented testing, okay. No leaks are possible, unless I'm doing a debug build. So here we see I've, uh, I've built two stockfish binaries. The previous master build, which is this big, and my master build? The current version, 20.8 megabytes? That doesn't sound right. This binary should not have doubled in size as a result of my one commit. Um, I've missed something here. Get check out previous master. So we've done this build. We don't need to keep doing that over and over. Um, yeah, so that build's done. That's frozen. Uh, debug equals no, etc. Uh, make clean. No need to do bother with all those steps in every build because now we're just acting on the head of the branch. We're not adding or removing commits right now, we're just staying at the current commit. And seeing what do I have to do. Um, well, I think I do need to make clean. Um, Huh. Oh, I'm sorry, I did this with Neural Network Enabled. Okay. So that was one thing to test. Um, so it's good to know that that works. Um, let's run that same test here. With building with the Neural Network, with it being embedded. Well, the embedding doesn't actually matter. Um... Yeah, so let's see. Don't embed the neural network into the executable. Because that's just gonna make the that's just gonna bloat the binary for no reason. Uh yeah, we're still using the same compiler. So we did a no build. Let's do a debug equals yes build here. And again, perform an instrumented test. So yeah, this reads from the commit history. Um, there's a number in the commit history saying how many positions should be encountered during a search. Uh, oh yeah, I should have shown this earlier. So um, yeah, the current build works um, for Mac using this compiler X with the Xcode 12 C++ library. Um, it also works with Xcode 12 using Clang or GCC on OS X. However, both GCC and Clang have problems when I attempt to build um, on Linux using Ubuntu Bionic. Uh, so that's the story. I'm uh, sticking to it. Um, man, I wish compilation were faster. But no, I have an idea. So recently I moved some code from the position class into the types.h header. And perhaps I need to move that code back to account for the difference we're now observing. Although, well, I'm, there could be some nuance that I've missed here. So what I think possibly I've missed um, so there's this class dirty piece, and I moved this atomic historical piece bitboard. Like, I don't think this should affect anything, but if I compile without support for atomic chess, I'm curious if this error still persists. In fact, let's just disable every chess variant and rebuild and reperform the same test, this time on a much smaller sampling of code. But yeah, this is going to be extremely painful, but people are super excited about Stockfish 12. I am too. 
so we're gonna get through this somehow yeah. <laughs> uh. Because, yeah, my getting this built will allow uh, Lee Chess to deploy um, my binary not only to our Android and other apps, but also directly to the website using some sort of um, C++ to LLVM cross-compile that I don't understand. But I want to get my code working and memory leak free before um, asking them to try to do any of whatever they do. Um, so yeah, we get plenty of errors. The first error we encounter is that we have a conditional jump based on an uninitialized value uh, as asserted at 2762. And I don't know how to troubleshoot this. <laughs> um, all I know is that, like, uh, if I run the same test, well, no, I mean, this same test instrumented Valgrind thing is run by uh, Travis and by other official Stockfish developers. There's no need to check the previous commit. It is my most recent commit that caused this problem. And the way that we know that and can admit to it despite not wanting to uh, I don't want to admit that it's my most recent commit, but it really is that caused this. It's by looking at the build history for the master branch. And so we see we previously had a successful master build, and this most recent master build has failed. And the only thing that changed was me adding this flag to conditionally uh, accept the code that allows a neural network to be used. So, oh, well, I'm confusing myself unnecessarily. Um, I did something kind of dumb here. How does, I guess the make file is capable, rather, my build script, which invokes make net, somehow is capable of running or downloading the neural network despite um, me not compiling with support for this um, network. Oh yeah, so if so we're not going to embed this uh, neural network into the binary itself. Um, so if we print out yeah, our two builds, um, previous commit with all the variants supported is 813 kilobytes. Um, my, no, I'm sorry, it's 5.8 megabytes. And if I remove support for all the variants, we're left with a much smaller binary. Um, I didn't think it would be that big a difference, but apparently it is. That's a lot of variants that were removed, so like... Wait, no, I have this backwards. Stockfish master is the previous commit. Um, so, yeah, this supports all these variants in 813 kilobytes. This one is our debug build, which is about, well, at least six times bigger. Yeah, somewhere between seven and eight times as large because this is megabytes rather than kilobytes. Um, why is that so enormous? Does the debugging version of this build really add that much? I guess one way to know is to reperform that build again. So yeah, let's build this with uh, debugging for the previous commit. Uh, is there anything more to do here? This instrumented.sh I think looks at um, 
Looks for a file called stockfish. Yeah. Um, so if I want to test the previous build, but not the current build, um, I want to uh, remove this step that says rename the binary. Uh, okay. So we do this build. No need to do any of that. Wait, why? I have a double ampersand at the end of this line. Sometimes, yeah, I don't get it. Like, don't I need this backslash at the end of a line for it to continue and execute the next line as well? Anyway, so here we're going to build the previous commit. Do not embed the neural network into the binary, but still do a debug build and um, check if there are memory leaks in the previous commit. Whoops, uh, git restore make file. All right, let's try that again. This time with the correct version of the make file. Uh, so you see all these flags for atomic and anti-chess and helpmate and bug house and all these other variants that people enjoy playing with stockfish. Um, so gotta wait for that to compile. Um, there's always something, but. So on the heap, all blocks are freed. So there's not a memory leak per se, but there's a failure to initialize something uh, that's asserted when we check the state info of a position. And normally I try to fix that off stream, but like I have tried a little bit already and I see it's gonna be kind of hairy, so we're gonna look at it together me and whoever feels like being my audience today. Oh, but yeah, I guess one other thing that should be noted is the expectation for running my engine on this cluster is that for things to work um, the expectation is that um, if the neural network is code is included as part of what we're trying to build um, we have to deviate from the official stockfish um, default behavior so that's why I'm so anxious about getting my um, easily way to compile without using this code because um, rather than having to change the source code all the time I'd rather have a switch in a make file that I can just invoke or change the default value of in the make file when I'm submitting a build to this cluster um, because this cluster doesn't support all the crazy stuff that the official stockfish team is currently working on uh, this supports um, building variant stockfish without the neural networks. We might go back at some point in the future and try to port changes from the official uh, fish testing. So what I'm talking about is variant fish test.net.org. Yeah, the variant stockfish testing queue, which takes inspiration from the official stockfish testing queue, if I can search for that. Um, yeah, so this is the official tool used by, 
or this is the tool used for distributed testing by the official Stockfish team, consisting of 181 powerful machines that crunch lots and lots of positions uh, with so many tests. And they've got forums in which they discuss all this stuff, and it's pretty awesome and like way more than I have time to maintain. Uh, Fabian graciously hosted this cluster, which my PC and honestly more powerful machines than mine contribute toward. Um, and so yeah, this is uh, this is where all the variant, or I'm sorry, this is where the multivariant stockfish and fairy stockfish. Fairy stockfish supports many more variants than my fork does, uh, which is great. Because, um, yeah, it's good that we can have different versions of engines that can be submitted to this cluster. Uh, Fairy Stockfish does not support neural networks. Um, support for neural networks for multivariant Stockfish is pretty limited at the moment. Um, like, a few variants do support it. I didn't have time to enable support for neural networks for all the variants yet. Some of them might not work so well in a 32-bit key network, like variants where you have more than 32 pieces. Could be problematic. Um, I'm just vamping until this build completes. Okay, so yeah, instrumented testing of the previous commit, both with and without debugging enabled. I mean, I didn't test this with the release, the non-debug build, but like, yeah, this instrumented testing is fine. Um, so, make clean, etc., etc. does not need to be done every time anymore. Uh, da, da, da. So, but hang on, we want to read the git log. That's useful information. Um, so, which build do I want to try next? I think this one. All right, and I'm gonna manually move. I mean, I don't need to move that, but there's no harm in renaming the current binary and then doing a make clean. All right, so hang on, I got that in my clipboard. Make clean. All right, so now we're gonna build. Uh, off of master here. Um, yeah, we don't need to repeatedly make clean every time we build. I'm gonna download the neural network. Um, yeah, I'm gonna copy that up here. Make net, and that way we don't need to have that make net repeated all over the place. So, um, what I'm not sure of is when this CXX flags assignment takes place as relates to execution of the make file. I think this gets assigned first and then the make file runs and appends to it. Um, yeah. Well, in fact, we should see that we should see the output of the make build um, indicate the same thing. Um, yeah, so let's do build. Cannot stay at stockfish. Oh, right. I've already moved this file. Uh, make net. All right, let's build. Gonna be a lot of vamping today. We've got an empty room. Uh, so yeah, these builds continue to operate. Um, you have to authenticate to issue one of the, or you have to log in to issue a request to build, and then you put the name of the branch you want to build here, and the other branch that you want it compared to, and they'll run some games of one engine versus the other, see which performs better. 
And yeah, there's a lot of variants that are supported. These are the ones that my engine supports. These are many others that Fairy Stockfish supports. Uh, here's some others that mine supports, but we don't test those as often, apparently. Um, Cute Chess is the runner that has the engines compete against each other to see which and keeps track of the results and can print out the game files. We are trying to build a chess engine. Um, so uh, it may or may not have been noted that uh, Stockfish uh, GitHub. Let's see. I guess this is the best place to find it. So here's the official account. Here's the Stockfish repository. And we can see release 12. It was released seven hours ago. And I'm scrambling to try to get all these changes into my version of Stockfish that can be released on Leeches. Um, but yeah, this performs significantly stronger than Stockfish 11. You can find all the release notes on GitHub. I don't know if this has been uploaded to... Uh, oh, it has. Yeah, so stockfishchess.org has the official build. So there's then my unofficial build that I'm working on that has all the variants supported. So, yeah. That's... I'm trying to... I have a chess engine that has won, like, the world championship for crazy house uh, chess the one where if you capture a piece it get you can choose to replace it onto the board instead of making a move it's kind of like shogi so my engines won that world championship two years in a row um, then a neural network based engine came along and crushed it and so now stockfish has neural network support um, and i'm trying to get that working and integrated with my version of the engine which can play these variants like bug house and crazy house um, so but also I'm trying not to break our testing cluster um, which is used for primarily for testing fairy stockfish these days um, so yeah this testing queue does not have support for neural networks probably won't have it for a very long time and I don't know whether all the machines that contribute to this cluster would support all the architecture required for neural networks anyway and I don't know whether cross compiling my engine to LLVM or other binary formats would work so I'm trying to find a way to comment out uh, or have a switch to comment out all the neural network dependencies just in case there's a problem um yeah where do you get the data from that's a good question uh the good news is that this engine's all open source you can i guess ask the developers they have a forum uh, i guess you'd go to the forum and ask them like how do you use this thing i don't know here's the fish cooking forum if they haven't explained it here, somebody will ask, and they will explain it here. Um, See, so yeah, I just search for this fish cooking thing. Um, so I got a FAQ. Probably instructions will get uploaded there. Yeah, I have no idea. Um, but no, well, the way I get the neural network now that I think about it is I check out the source code here and then I type make net and this using GNU uh, build tools um, the GNU development suite will invoke the make command that's bundled in that suite there is a target called net in the make file and somehow that runs some magic to download the neural network values so that's how I obtain them but that's how I obtain them that's not I'm not advising you that that's the right way you can obtain them if you need them just ask on the fish cooking forum 
probably everybody's going to start asking this question at the same time until they actually document this somewhere that's easy to access and everybody knows where it is. So, yep. Yeah. I'm just focused on trying to get this to build without neural network support, which is kind of messy at the moment. Okay, what? What build was I doing? It says instrumented testing okay. What build did I just execute? Uh, okay, yeah, it's the wrong build. Git checkout master. So yeah, here we are with the use NNUE uh, enabled by default. And if we want to see, here's what I changed. I just added this part to the make file. That uh, checks whether NNUE is specified, and if not, um, then add this switch. But if somebody calls this make command with NNUE equals no, then don't add the switch. Um, and if the switch is enabled, compile with all the source code. Otherwise, only compile with some of it. Uh, do I have this backwards? If equal empty string filter use NNUE. No, I have that correct. Otherwise, compile with all the sources. Um, all right, and then similarly, we're going to disable neural network features, etc. Um, yeah, I documented here the usage of the NNUE flag. Here I started modifying source code. Uh, I don't remember everything, but basically I went into the header files, commented out everything pertaining to evaluation. Um, uh, rather, commented out everything pertaining to this NNUE um, by using this if def uh, use underscore NNUE. And so if this switch is not defined, then all this is commented out. But if this is defined, then it's then the code is just um, built, uh, including all the code. Um, I wonder. No. Well, I am kind of curious. Is this functional? This couldn't possibly be functional, but if it were, maybe I'd have cause for concern there. Yeah, I don't know. I'll have to take a closer look at what consumes that value. Well, no, actually, I don't, because it's comment. This block of code's commented out, so there can't be any accessor of that. Otherwise, I'd have a compile error. Uh, what else have I commented out? NNUE threshold one and threshold two are not in use. Um, so yeah, this has some conditional code that says if we're within a threshold, then use the neural network score. Otherwise, just uh, evaluate normally. And so I'm saying if we have neural networks enabled, do the code normal way. Otherwise, just do the normal classical evaluation not involving a neural network. Um, yeah, consumers of these thresholds are all commented out, etc. Um, but yeah, I went into the headers, commented out everything that I saw that was related to neural networks, and then uh, used the compiler to point me at all the pieces of code that I'd have to comment out inside the CPP files um, to get the code compiling again. Um, Yeah, maybe I should take a closer look at evaluate.cpp. So this init nnue routine uh, tries to load a network at startup time or when the engine receives 
the uh, set option eval file. Um, so this is all within the scope of this if def and then UE. Is there any side effect in here that I need to concern myself with? That perhaps something here is a side effect that I need despite not needing the neural network? I don't think so. I don't think so. Likewise, I don't think this causes any side effects that I require. Yeah, it looks like everything is dynamically allocated from here and freed by the end of the scope. Is there anything else in this evaluate file that I need to comment out for my code to work? Uh, basically, I could just search for capital N, capital N, and this will point me to anything that may be... Well, there's some uh, misnomers like that winnable constant, but in general, this should point me to like stuff neural network related. Um, So if the neural network's enabled, then we do this extra evaluation. Uh, otherwise, we don't. And that's that. Oh, this is a macro here. Macro to embed, binary. Um, yeah, I should take a look to see... I don't think this binary is accessed anywhere. Yeah, no, it's only referenced in code that's now commented out. So that's fine. Yeah, it'll be good once it works. It's just, boy, is this challenging. Actually, well, I hadn't thought much about this. Use in a new E. Well, no, this is commented out too. I have thought a bit about that, and it's fine. So the thing that's tripping up um, Valgrind is this state info data structure being manipulated by I don't know what. Um, oh, hang on. So yeah, let's disable all the variants again and rerun this test this time without variants. Just running as little code as possible. And maybe I need to take some of the commands out of the instrumented tests script and start isolating what's the easiest use case that trips the error. Troubleshooting's always tricky. So no leaks are possible, but functionality is still affected based on uninitialized values. Actually, now I'm thinking a little bit deeper. I could enhance this check right here. Actually, there's two things I could do. Well, one of them is not going to be useful with Valgrind. There's some self-diagnostic code that I could run within the engine itself. But Valgrind throws errors when it encounters this code. So let's not enable the self-diagnostic code. But instead, um, let me add another test. Uh, I'm just going to put an if1 and uh, an end if right there. And what if I want to compare not the entire state info, but some member off of the state info? 
I want to... I don't even know. Um, so state info has quite a few members. What member could be problematic? How about dirty piece? Um, so yeah, how about instead of address of S Oh, shit, how does this, how do I do pointers and all this here again? So I want the address of st.dirtypiece, and I want the address, no, st is a pointer, I need to dereference it this way. I want the address of si.dirtypiece, and size of dirty piece, which hopefully can be resolved. Uh, where's my clean step? Do I not have a clean in here? Evidently there is no clean step. Okay, I'll try not to be too disturbed by that. Um, I might need to make clean at some point. Usually when I add or remove variants, I need to remove all the binaries and recompile them. Um, just to remove noise. Because sometimes array indexes don't match up before and after switches have uh, been changed. So, um, yeah, here we go. It's not as if all of my source code files load from config.h. I don't even have a config.h here, but um, So yeah, when I'm changing array sizes by adding or removing elements like Crazy House, Bug House, Atomic Chess, Anti-Chess, and so forth, um, that I need to rebuild all of my binaries, all the object files that are used, linked together into the executable. All right, so we still have errors. Did it trigger an error on the code that I just added? Um, 2763. Okay. So first of all, my code did compile. Second, uh, yes, we've actually managed to assert that not only was it the state here, but it was the dirty piece the line of code above that that has undefined behavior. Um, so that narrows our search because it means one or more of the things in this data structure are not initialized. Did we already know that? Also, I'm confused. What kind of build am I doing again? What kind of build am I doing? Uh, we're doing neural network enabled. So all of the neural networking code is present. So dirty piece is defined. I'm um, dear dirty piece is defined either way. Um, Huh. That's super confusing. Why am I the first person to see this error? So... That 
doesn't matter. This here should matter. Here we're referencing something which I'm not sure is initialized. Maybe it is. Uh, dirty num is equal to 1. Where is dp referenced in this function? Uh, captured, cap sq, etc. Remove piece. Hmm. Uh, so take a look at the test script. Nope, that's up in tests. Instrumented.sh. Here, this performs several tests. Um, Belgrind thread, Belgrind undefined. But where in here do we define like what kind of tests we're performing? Eval for a thousand positions at depth 10, etc. Um, so, okay, so these are quite a few command lines that are issued to a running process, I guess in an expect script or otherwise fed to standard in. I was expecting to see like bench this or bench that. Um, stockfish, set number of threads, set the starting position, ask for the best move, etc. So like nowhere here are we explicitly setting the neural networking parameters for should we use the neural network or not? It's just by default assumed that you do want to use them. Okay. Meaning that to parameterize my test to disable them. Well, hang on. Well, this is for end game testing. We haven't even gotten this far. But, um, yeah, if I want to disable. Uh, I either have to explicitly say set option use NNUE false up here, or I've got to change the bench source code, but no, that wouldn't work here either. Um, yeah, I'd have to set use NNUE equals false if I wanted to explicitly run without them. Um, I mean, it wouldn't hurt to test that. So the parameter name, set option name, use space and then UE. Default is true. Uh, if I want to disable that default, it's not even specified here. For args and eval, etc., do this test. Wait, what's this? EXE prefix, just run stockfish with arcs? Stockfish, stockfish eval is a thing? I didn't know you could just call the engine. Prefix, EXE prefix, etc. How does this work? Uh, prefix. Exclamation point. Exe. I don't get it. Oh, we're using Valgrind to invoke tests through this binary. Okay, fine. Um, so we. That's kind of amazing. But I guess we're between each command. We're verifying that this has worked. Um, okay. So if I want to change that, this actually requires me to just go into the options list here and say, no, we're not going to use that by default. 
And similarly, I have to go into the benchmark code where we specified by default we do want, uh, let's also disable neural networks there. Um, let's rerun the test without any usage of neural networks, but with them still enabled. I'm uh, sorry, with those still accessible, just not in use. So yeah, that didn't have any effect. Um, this is that not what I wanted to test. I guess what I want to test is um, could this be reproduced if somehow I ran Veil Grind um, on the official build without using the neural networks that uh, come bundled with the engine. I guess that's the question. Um, also, like, I could log some more information here. Uh, so, in this block where I said if one, do the following or compile with this code in place. I can actually print out to standard error anything I want to print. Um, and I guess I want to print the option of use an NUE. Uh, how do I do that? Oh, here it is. This is the flag in question. So if, yeah, let's print out whether this flag is true or false. Um, So right before our program crashes, let's print out, I'm sorry, right before the undefined behavior occurs, um, let's print the value of that use and then UE flag. Which I think we'll find is true. Okay, so on the first error here, Oh, even though I'm printing to standard error, that test script suppresses my output. Well, that's not cool. Can we at least, uh, oh, here's the command in question, veil grind, etc. This is taking my command, uh, taking the output and exporting it to dev null. Um, I mean, maybe my output does appear somewhere here, but I can't read it. So let's just run the test all by itself with this Go Nodes 1000. Come on. There we go. Where's my output? Depth to etc. Conditional depends on undefined values. But before we get to the conditional etc., we should see. Oh, here it is. Yes. Yeah, so this is enabled. Um, okay. What's the deal? Did my code even compile? Well, I didn't try to compile that step that time. Um, but yeah, this is... Oh, 
hang on, the reason I didn't get my output is because it's the if statement that causes the problem. Um, not the assertion. So, yeah, let's try this again. Okay. Use NNUE has a value of a zero, meaning we're not using it. Okay, and then we use it and we have a heap summary and then we don't use it again. And then presumably later we use it. Okay, goodness, that's a lot of output. Um, but yeah, all these errors seem to happen when we're using the neural network. Um, so that at least helps narrow it down slightly. Um, hang on. If eval use an UE. Um, yeah, let's use that to surround all this code. Because we're not failing unless we're using the neural network anyway. That's confusing. I don't understand why this code... I'm sorry, there might be other errors to consider. So yeah, we're going to see tons of strings, or, I don't know, sequences that say use NNUE as one over and over here. Um, yeah. And that doesn't really prove anything. Um, it just verifies that we're doing a lot of testing. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. I'm being silly. So... If I'm wanting to test this, um, yeah, the real way to check where undefined behavior occurs is to have two separate clauses here. So have one for if we have a neural network enabled, and we have another for if the neural network's not enabled. And let's just put some blank lines between them so we can tell um, which error occurs more often. It'll give us the line of code where the error occurs, where the undefined behavior uh, is what we're susceptible to. My prediction is that all these undefined behavior things are going to happen on the same line, which evidently is 2763. That that's the only number we're going to get there is a 2763. We're not going to get the other 277 whatever. Um, hmm. Hang on. So much for my theory. 2772. Wait, so this is equally distributed among... Well, this one happened first. Um, yeah, we have this oscillation between 63 and 72. But it's the 63 that caused the first undefined behavior. So if we could fix this, that could potentially fix all of our issues. Um, so... And this down here is 72, right? No! 72 is this thing. 72 is not even this. So yeah, our errors... Um, 
there's some other data structure in state info that's polluted after this gets polluted. Okay, well that's good to know. But yeah, this is the one that happens first. Um, and just to spare some confusion, we'll put more blank lines in there so that these numbers, line numbers, can never get mixed up. Okay, so um, yeah, I'm curious what member up here of dirty piece is uninitialized. Um, when does dirty piece get initialized in the first place? I was actually quite confused about this. So position.h contains the member declaration. Um, and no other file sets the value of this except position.cpp. And sometimes we dereference this value, but it has to be initialized first. Um, it must have a default initializer because we're never doing an assignment to it. I'm confused why only my fork has this issue. We're going to create another terminal and see um, what's going on here. Um, get branch v get fetch origin status make clean get status all right, we're going to remove one dot text. Uh, get check. Uh, no, we're going to reset um, our branch master to match up with official Stockfish version 12. And take a look at what we've got in this build script, which is woefully inadequate. grab much of this, maybe all of it. Um, okay, so previously we did one really simple thing. Now we're not doing one very simple thing anymore. Um, end game code doesn't need to be there. All this other complex stuff, I guess we can leave it there for now. Puzzles aren't a thing here. Um, let's see. Okay, yeah, I don't need two build phases. Um, okay. Yeah, I don't need a special checkout here. Um, let's see, we were using Clang. Let's preserve the J6 flag, because I don't know if my profile has that configured here or not. Um, their version of this makefile does not contain an NNUE flag. Alright, so make net make clean. We'll do that at least once. Um, okay, and then yeah, do val grind on that. This should be sufficient. Um, Okay. 
so after this successfully completes without any errors, uh, once this completes without reporting any errors, I'm going to start adding some more code like this can check if the dirty piece has been initialized or not. Because I'm not sure where that is supposed to be initialized or what it's supposed to be initialized to. Maybe I've done something stupid inside typesetH and I left in a member that's no longer present. I could look at typesetH on this version of the code and look at it. Um, rather, there's a there's a command. Git diff origin master typesetH, which will show all the stuff I've added. Um, that's not a side by side diff. I forget if there's a way to do a side-by-side -side git diff. I don't think so. But that's fine. So yeah, here we see I've modified the dirty piece structure conditionally only if this preprocessor directive is defined. I don't think I changed anything else of interest in this file. Um, so it should still function the same way. But goodness, how do you test that? I don't know. Wait. Yeah, there are comments, but that doesn't matter. Oh, well, maybe the parameters in this test are different. Get diff origin master tests instrumented at sh. No, actually this file's not changed at all. That's surprising in itself, but yeah, there's no differences. Should there be differences? I don't know. Okay. Yes, yeah, so instrumented tested Testing completed. Okay. Um, and this is doing a debug build with Clang, etc. Um, the J6 number of jobs should not affect uh, the build output. Um, what else can I look at? Uh, so position that CPP. There's a definition of POS is okay. And this is where official stockfish is failing on state info. Um, but yeah, apparently here both SI and ST are initialized. Okay, hang on. I'm being kind of dumb. So we know on one line of code there's an uninitialized variable, right? We don't know what the uninitialized variable is, but we know that it's either si dirty piece or st dirty piece. Something contained in one of these is it. So to troubleshoot that, I'm going to write some extremely silly code. Uh, so we're going to compare a value to itself. Now, of course, this will result in a compiler warning that you're comparing a reference to the same exact reference. So unless uh, the equals operator is overloaded, you're going to end up with the same result every time. That's not my challenge. My challenge is that we're comparing an undefined value somehow. 
Um, wait, do I still have uh, clean? I've commented out clean. Good, so this should go much faster. I'm still in the midst of trying to set up a bloop as my build server. Um, but there's just too much going on right now. I can't shift to bloop while troubleshooting all the rest of this. Hang on, this is doing make with J3, isn't it? If I bump that to J6, this might go faster. Building stuff. Um, so on 2776 is where undefined behavior happens. So the compiler did something smart. Ah, that's annoying. I was afraid it might do that. All right, fine. You win, compiler. Um, I do wonder, could I break this across multiple lines to figure out what thing is undefined? Uh, we'll find out. I didn't think this would work. And if this doesn't work, I guess I'm going to end up creating an expression that just compares an object to, I guess, a null reference. You can't do that, though. So I'll have to, like, dynamically allocate a thing just for a purpose of being able to call this function. This uh, memcmp. All right. So 2763, is it always on that line? 2763, 69, 63, 69, etc. So, uh, yeah, I was afraid of that. Gosh darn it. So, I'm guessing mem cmp requires two non-null pointers. So do I really have to allocate a new object to do what I'm trying to do? Uh -huh. uh, compilers are too smart these days. Yeah, is there some way to check? Well, no, I could just use the not equals null. That's a referential comparator. Um, yeah, how do I just check if an object's not equal to a zero object? Uh, yeah, it would require me to allocate. Fine. Okay, well, we can do that. Um, so to allocate, um, you have to declare a dirty piece. So here we've declared it. Uh, let me go into position at CP. Um, dirty piece test. I don't know. What do you call this? What in the world do you call this? ASDF. World's greatest name. All right, so yeah, in an endeavor to get this to actually perform a comparison, um, I'm gonna do nothing. Based on comparing um, there we go. There 
here's ASDF. Now we're going to do the same test here. So we've allocated a new object that I don't know if I needed to do anything special to initialize it. Um, Wait, do I still have a reference to this thing? Dirty num equals one, etc. I don't know. Okay, so it's initialized. To my satisfaction, anyway. So now we've got this local object. And we're going to use that to figure out what's not initialized. And of course, my test is going to fail for some other stupid reason, but let's not worry about that yet. All right, so 2769. Well, our first error occurred way up here uh, in 2763. Fuck. Wait. Uh, yeah, I was afraid of that. Now, conditional jump or move depends on uninitialized values. Oh wait, no. No, that error didn't happen on 63. It happened on 69. Well, I saw 63 somewhere, but I don't see it anymore. Must have scrolled up too far. Uh, but 69 is where this error first happens. So here. <laughs> Aye, well, that doesn't make sense. I don't understand. I mean, yes, we know that this is virtually always going to result in... Do I have to do something special to trick the compiler here? I guess so. Because I guess having an if statement and nothing in the body um, is not enough. Uh, oh, hang on. Okay, so there's a true expression. Here's a true expression. It's not going to cause the assert to fail, but also it should cause some code to be invoked. So that this can't be stripped out by the some compile step. Compilers are magic, you know? Or the magical. Um, so yeah, hopefully it's not going to strip out my always true assertion just because I did the initialization a few lines earlier. All right, so our first error occurs at 2769. That makes no sense, unless somehow, I don't get it. So we're saying both of these expressions here, I am extremely confused. How is it that this can generate undefined behavior, but 
the four lines above it cannot generate undefined behavior. Every reference in this line is referenced in the previous four lines. This should... There's something I don't know. I'm just... So I don't know how to troubleshoot that further. I need to know which reference is undefined. And I don't know how to figure that out. There is a different approach I could take. But since I already don't know if SI or ST are undefined, I mean, no, SI has to be defined here, right? Here's how we initialize SI. And every member in state info is initialized in the scope. And I didn't comment anything out here. So we're comparing the entirety of position.cpp. It's a lot of code. Somehow I need to find the needle in the haystack. Did I really remove a comment? Or is that uh, comment moved up a bit in this code, but otherwise still present? I accidentally removed a comment. That's not ideal. Yeah, it's not a matter of me moving the comment, it's actually been removed altogether. Why would I do that? Yeah, I don't know. Thankfully, it's only a comment, or maybe it's moved elsewhere. There is one other tact I can take, which is completely start over. I mean, we're talking about me taking Stockfish from their repo 
and starting to apply all my changes one by one to it until I find um, which one causes this issue. Potentially this here might be my issue. I don't know. Wait. Hmm. Accumulator's not present if I'm compiling with my code, right? Hmm. Maybe the absence of accumulator is what's causing my headache. Actually, that's probably it. Um, yeah, this mem copy, this final operation is copy some number of bytes. Um, let me look at the layout of the data structure. So... Yeah, there's my mistake. Yeah, if this is disabled, I do want to copy members of this, but I don't want to copy dirty piece. That's the bug. Jeez. All right, we found it. How do we verify this? Watch and learn. <laughs> Reviewing your own code is extremely painful, but it reminds you never to do anything interesting. Um, So here, that's the resolution. We don't want to copy all members. And here, accumulator is no longer defined because we're not using accumulator. I'm still using dirty piece, but maybe I shouldn't be. This is such a hack. I'm not happy with it. What even consumes dirty piece anymore? Just the position class. And we're only interested in it for atomic. Um, yeah. I see. So we're going to revert one of my earlier changes. Wait, so we have all these references to DP now. Um, right. So those aren't required anymore. Um, but yeah, here I'm going to expand this to cover that. Which in turn means if I want to support atomic chess again, um, that even though there was some elegance to what I was doing here, this was too fancy. Um, There we go. Um, <laughs> let me think. Let me think. 
So when I'm copying data structures without copying dirty piece, um, I think this is what I need. which does cause me to think a little bit, a little bit more. Um, So if we're using the neural network, we're going to copy the entire state. Yeah, otherwise we're only going to copy members excluding the neural network members. Um, That seems correct. So the value of this use NNUE flag should not affect um, functionality for atomic chess. Um, yeah, what is DP even used for? It's like an undo move. Um, not undo null move, but undo move here. We get information back out of the dirty piece structure. Um, and make pieces on the board from that structure. Um, hang on. So commit this just in case I accidentally lose my code changes somehow. Um, so now if I rebuild, we're going to hit com some compiler error because I probably didn't get everything exactly right the first time. But as long as I've declared things correctly in my header files, um, yeah, I should be able to lean on the compiler and have it point me to what lines of code I have to fix for the declarations to make sense with whatever code's trying to execute at this point. Um, so yeah, we should be very close at this point. This test should pass. I don't need my other terminal anymore. I should compare um, my... Okay, well, this didn't quite work. We're still, still having some issue, but I think we're narrowing things down a bit. Um, 2762. So it's the same line of code that was failing earlier is still failing. Um, yeah, as I was saying, this state info is where I'm getting stuck. Um,
Hmm. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, I'm trying to think about the alignment of this data structure in memory. And would it benefit me to take these bit boards and move them up or down in the structure? Um, no. I don't see any immediate obvious benefit. Not copied when playing a move. Um... Hang on, did I do something extremely stupid here? Survey says probably yes, but um, git diff head minus 100 position dot h. Uh, so this will show 100 commits ago. Uh, what did this data structure look like? So 100 commits ago, this atomic bit war was declared right after captured piece. So guess where I'm going to put it. I'm going to take these and put them back exactly where they were, right after captured piece. That's exactly where they're going to go. Yeah, so not copied when making a move. I'm not sure if that makes sense. But okay. Um, get diff head. So previous with head. So we've removed dirty piece from this chain of pointers, and um, move that. We move this end if down one. So dirty piece is only included in position data structure if we're considering doing anything neural network related at all. Um, yeah. Okay, let's redo this test. It's not going to make a difference because I've only realigned this, I've only changed where this particular array is located in the header. Like since my last test, I haven't changed any of the CPP source, so like I still need to initialize my array. Well, that array is not even accessed anywhere. <laughs> um, we're not compiling with that variant. So like that if def atomic for atomic chess uh, should return zero or should not um, result in that part of the data structure being present. So yeah, we have a second problem. That's not ideal. Um, So, um, our error occurs on do move 1916, and 2762 is the line of code where the failure is triggered. All right, so this is state info does not match up or has an uninitialized member after uh, position 1916. So this is the end of this method. Um, previous to this method, I don't know. Like, do we assert this condition at the beginning of the method? Could we assert it at the beginning? I don't see why not. So before we execute a move, is our position valid? Let's find out. I think we assert this already. Um, if not, we could, so 
Yeah, and then we could just take this block and keep moving it down until we see what's the first time that we encounter an invalid position. So something in this function apparently is doing the invalidation, or something higher up the stack might be. So where's the first point in here? Uh, hang on. So we did a compile, and now we see that at line 1919. See, so yeah, at the beginning of the execution of do move, we have a problem when doing a node type one kind of move. Uh, that's not great. Oh no. Wait. No, this is not the beginning of the method, it's the end. Or the beginning of the function. So, yeah, something executed inside the scope of this function is causing the error. Um, because we have a valid position at the start of the function, and it becomes invalid later on. Um, So, I don't know. So how about before we do any of this incrementing stuff? Okay, how about we have another block of assertions. Let's check this here. Do you have any more assertions elsewhere? Not that I'm aware of. Um, Trial and error, trial and error. We're two hours into this. But hopefully today we'll be able to do a release and then not have to worry about this for another six months or so. So that's the hope. Um, meanwhile, Let's see, fish cooking has got plenty of comments. They have this stockfish release 12. Have I been notified about anything on GitHub recently? Um, include some ZZG table based stuff in the binary. <laughs> yeah. Wait, did this actually make it? Oh, this made the cutoff for That's really cool. If this actually made it into the release. Yeah, I think this did get committed. So, yeah, Ronald demands work can be um, saved and recognized. Um, that should make um, Stockfish behave smarter in positions with... Wait, no, this is just a request for comment. Just kidding. Of course. Uh, I was not... Yeah, I would have liked to see this make it into Stockfish 12. <sighs> uh, 
Yes, of course this is an enormous visibility win, because people complain about Stockfish making random moves in a four-man endgame all the time. So of course we want to include some really trivial table bases um, in our binary. So go figure that the maintainers decided to free Stockfish 12 right before that could get merged. Guess we'll have to wait until Stockfish 13 to get stock, uh, for it to not make stupid moves in the end game. Or not make awkward moves, anyway. They're not stupid, it's just difficult to understand the moves. Um, maybe it's too much to aspire for in one release and to support across all architectures. I don't know. Um, yeah, so they have another code simplification. Where are these comments? Okay. Yeah, we'll let them duke it out as to which simplification should be accepted. Um, Stockfish 12 is released. Binaries are available, etc. That's very exciting. Um, how's my build doing? Okay. Conditional jump or move depends on uninitialized values. Uh, this time at line 2768, pass from line 1498. 1498. So here's another one of my if1 blocks. Wait, didn't I have another one of these? Um, Oh yeah, so 1498 is actually the first of my two blocks up here. Um, hmm. Ay vey. So... Yeah, I'm not sure what this node, this thread nodes fetch add. Is that that's not going to break anything here? Probably. Mem copy. This could potentially break something. Um, although this is trying to initialize a new state, an EWST object. So like this should not cause side effects on our current state. Um, yeah, so we'll add these if one blocks and retest and see if there's maybe an undesired side effect in the initialization caused by, or in the result of a mem copy operation. Shouldn't be. Uh, I need like a leeches TV or something to keep you guys amused. Here's the Leech STV. Everybody's got this name Satrash. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's Turkish. But yeah, like everybody in Turkey calls their chess thing Satrash because that means chess. So, but yeah, here we actually have an international master who's taken upon themselves that name. So they are chess. So, can you imagine, like, if everybody on the chess server named themselves chess? Like, how things could get confusing. But I guess if you're an international master, you kind of earned this privilege. How's my build doing? Build's done. Anyway. Um, so, POS is okay from line 1504. It's our first error. 1504. Okay. So it's this one that first fails. So something between this if one and this if one causes an issue. Oh, probably this assignment where we're assigning. Yeah, I could see there might be an. Wait. Did our assertion fail? 
Yeah, sorry, our assertion failed there. That's just me being dumb. Um, of course this assertion is going to fail here. Because um, we're not going to have a valid position until all the members of NEWST... I'm sorry, until ST has been fully initialized. Um, which probably won't happen until quite a way into this method. Uh, our function. So yeah, we shouldn't have a valid position until the very tail end of this. Uh, update the hash key, reset the en passant square, if needed, update castling rights, etc. Um, move the piece, and uh, once the pieces have been moved, uh, if it's a pawn, check some other stuff with promotion. At the very tail end of all of this, we're going to validate that we have a valid position. But yeah, that's there's no way in the middle of this function to assert all the conditions that are asserted. Yeah, here we are. Set side to move, set the check info. Um, this is really the first point at which we can assert that like we should have a valid position, I think. Um, and yeah, and this calculation of the repetition info right below it shouldn't cause any side effects that are problematic. So let's go back to watching the game. Go chess, go. Win chess, win. If you're going by the numbers, IM is International Master. FM is FIDA master the international chess federation so uh, i am is actually the higher title of the two even though the word international appears in both titles um, so yeah if you're doing this by the numbers you gotta think that uh, white has the better chances there and now black again has the stronger titles so um, let's see how's this going so yeah we don't have a valid position so something at 2765 in that state info is not initialized um, What in here could still not be initialized that needs to be? So this part of the data structure, this atomic, doesn't need initialization. Um, uh, I wonder. No, that can't be it. Yeah, mem copy with the size of the entire state info should not affect anything. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. Obviously something's not initialized, but I don't know what. I could re-enable all the variants and see, like, does this have any impact? There's no harm in that at this point. But there's probably also no benefit in it. Um, at least no obvious benefits. So, um, Let's take another look at position at CVP, see where all the places uh, we have use underscore NNUE. So this initializer, which acts on ST dirty piece, which is not declared anymore. I'm sorry, our build is still with all the neural network code enabled. So yeah, this is still declared. Um, okay, I've done something dumb here. 
yeah, there we go. Let's go back to viewing the position. Instead of changing our directory to the root directory, we're going to use slash defined within a file. Um, right, so. Okay, here's an idea. Oops. Let's check if what I'm intending to try to do, which is disable all the neural network code, does that at least work? That's what I was trying to figure out is do I need to change any more uh, contents of any CPP file? I could also check whether types.h is in sync with the upstream version. How's our game going? Oh, by the way, I've got like a user style that like on hover will fade in and then fades out. I kind of like that. Um. All right, so do move nineteen nineteen. Okay, so we still have uninitialized values somewhere. Uh, POS is okay on two seven six five. So it is state info. That still contains some uninitialized something or other. Even with everything between the if def and end if commented out. How? How could one of these things be uninitialized? I don't know. Um, type, or git diff origin master type stage. So here we're importing string and or including string and vector. Yeah, I think we need to include those because we have plenty of strings. Um, Yeah, okay, so with regard to all this neural networking code, I haven't done anything dumb there. Um, so it's just, oh, I've got something in evaluate.h. Uh, oh yeah, this whole namespace is more or less commented out. So init and verify. Um, if they operate on anything out of scope here, well, there's trace and there's evaluate. Um, so maybe these trace and evaluate cause side effects that I need to happen. Um, So we're not embedding the neural network. This entire scope is commented out. I don't think that caused any side effects. Like here we initialize an options map, but it's self-contained. Up here, this only acts if an eval file is given. Um, so this could all be disabled by way of this default NNUE directory. No, it could be disabled by setting use NNUE to false. And if you could set that during startup or initialization, 
none of that be used. Um, the evaluate function. So based on the value of this expression, use NNUE would either uh, do all this fancy stuff based on the value of threshold one, or would simply perform a no trace evaluation. Well, now we are doing a no trace evaluation. Um, so yeah, that's nothing. And like, this doesn't cause any side effects to the position here. Um, what else could cause side effects? That can't. Uh, so it's not evaluate.h. Um, so there's benchmark, evaluate, main, position, search, UCI, and UCI option. We're in search where we're using this. Oh, verify NNUE. Don't need that. Um, okay, what else? Um, yeah, I think the only reason I had to touch these other files um, is because they're calling verify NNUE, which is no longer declared. Yeah, so. Okay. Um, hmm. <laughs> Likewise, main, right? I think we looked at that a second ago, but yeah, this is using init and an UE, which this, as we saw in evaluate.cpp. This tries to load stuff, but if you set use NNUE to false, this all gets bypassed anyway. So yeah, there. this is already tested with a value of false. This does not cause any side effects that would cause undefined behavior. Um, okay. This is really not going to help, but let's use the default make file that I've been using for a long time with all these variants thrown into the mix. This is not going to make tree, uh, debugging any easier. It will only introduce more references that could also be undefined. I can't imagine this functioning any better than with um, none of these variants enabled, but um, for the sake of trying something, we're going to try it. Also, I'm curious, so we got the Leeches forums. Uh, okay, we've not mentioned Stockfish 12 here yet. Um, different chess ratings for women. Okay. Um, I don't understand why you would do that. There's nothing in the whole Glico PDF about ratings for women. That's offensive, but maybe somebody's come up with something. I can't believe that, but maybe. Um, 1919 is what caused or called this. So yeah, at the end of executing a move, at the end of this do move function, um, POS is okay, fails on somewhere, 2765. Yep, so more investigation is required. I'm annoyed. thought I'd be able to fix this today. I've made progress in spite of myself. 
size of state info. Size of state info. Yeah, that doesn't ring a bell. Wait. Do I have make clean? Yeah, I'm making clean every time. I don't need to do that. Calling make clean every time is going to slow down 